Hello. Hello, hello. And welcome to this week's edition of Greet the Week. I am Mona Duncan, and I'm here with my co-host, Jan Moray. And today, Jan has uh, selected our topic and is going to be leading off with it. And she wrote a little blurb saying, can anger result from feelings of sadness? And she talks about the fact that in initially learning about Dr. Glasser and reality therapy and choice theory and the concepts, she just had some questions there. But uh, I'm thinking that uh, she came to some kind of a resolution. Is that true, Jane? <laughs> well, kind of. Uh, um, that's right. So let's, let's talk about this uh, a little bit because I can, I can remember, I used to be, um, I used to have sad feeling very frequently. And um, I, I did get the label, I was suffering from depression at one point, but I refused to accept that label. But I, you know, by exploring it, it's like, well, why am I feeling so down? And, and when you start thinking about it, a lot of times it's just because you're not getting your way. <laughs> and that's not always, not always. I mean, there's uh, obviously there's grief and other things like that, that, um, that result in sad feelings. But, but a lot of times um, I, I was upset. I was feeling down because I just couldn't get people to do the things that I wanted to do. And I had never really um, put that uh, label of anger with it. But I, um, but after thinking about it, it's like, well, I guess you could say, I'm angry, but I didn't really feel like I was, I was angry. And um, so I just thought we'd, we'd start that discussion, you know, or, or maybe which comes first. I, the way I wrote the, the title was, is can anger result from feelings of sadness? So is that the way it is? Or is it that, that um, feelings of sadness result in, in anger? So which, which way is it? Or is it, can it be both? Well, um, in working with the, the prisoners, I would work on anger. Uh -huh. And uh, I used as the seven step process of going down to from being, you know, a cute kid and lovable and all the way, all the way down to being hurtful and being incarcerated by we the people, uh, I used the seven steps that was developed by Raymond Brock. And I'll just give them to you and then we'll, we'll talk about them, okay? Okay, all right. Okay, he says, first of all, phase and one. Actually, instead of calling it anger, uh, he called it the development of emotional issues. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now whatever label we all want right. to put on it, it's an okay. emotional issue. Of course, that can be elation or it can be the- That's sadness. what I was gonna ask, that could be good or bad. It's just an emotional- Right, it's one of those things that doesn't have an opposite of it. It's an emotional- Okay. okay. Emotional. But as it becomes an issue, we have a tendency to think it's gone to the problem side. But first off, it starts off with being hurt or being sad or being, you know, just, just hurt. And it can be, our, our ego was slightly bruised. <laughs> and it can be something as minute as someone just not speaking to you. You know, you feel like you were overlooked or something. And then that can lead us into frustration. Yeah. And my definition of frustration is when life says no, and I wanted a yes. And I never liked it when life said no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that frustration sets in, you know, whenever we, we have this slight hurt to our ego and that frustration sets in. And then the next step is fear. But nobody wants to be fearful. So we just instantly slide into anger. Okay. I guess I don't um, sit in that fear mode very, very long. Well, that fear comes in the loss of control. Okay. That fear comes in the loss of anticipation of reprisal. All that right. fear comes in there that, you know, I'm going to get caught or, or okay. that fear comes in there. But, you know, so then we slide into anger. And that anger is that emotion following the perception of hurt complicated by frustration and fear and then that leads into wrath or okay. i call it you know it's that anger that has brewed overnight it's the one that's settling <laughs> and it's 
thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and get a little bit more and more angry. Bitterness and, and entitlement begins to set in. And then the uh, sixth step is hostility. Become angry toward the image. I mean, just hostile. I can't speak a kind word mm -hmm. to that person that has offended you in some way or another. The only thing of it is, is that it has a tendency not only to go to that one, but it, maybe it just kind of spreads out to others as well. And then the last one is hate. And hate is any of those, uh, it's that bottled up anger, that bottled up hostility, those thoughts of aggression, those thoughts of, you know, I'll get even, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do something to make them hurt as bad as they hurt me. And but you don't always go through all seven of those steps. No, right. that, but that's the development of. Okay. okay, okay. And right. so anytime, 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 you get back it up, back it up, back it up. Start, start at the, start at the level that you see yourself at at the moment. Okay, so if I'm all the way to hate. <laughs> yeah, the hate and the hostility, the hate and the, the acting out. And, the, and, and the, seeing it initially and you know, when someone tells me they're sad or whenever I feel sad, to me, that's an indication to get in touch with my emotions, get in touch with my emotions so that I can begin to bring up some empathy for, as opposed to disregard of, for the person that, you know, may have helped to contribute to that sadness. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so that emotional state that you talked about at the at the beginning that that can be the sadness can be in there yes definitely and then um but but then somewhere but if you continue to stay sad and you're not acting out and you're not um, lashing out or maybe you do um when, you're when, lashing in lashing in out. Okay, so you're you're yeah. angry at yourself, or you're right. cutting yourself down and saying how right. worthless you are. Yeah, going back to that that really brief encounter that caused that some kind of a disregard. Um, they walked right back me and didn't speak. You know that could be that could be you know it gives you that frustration. Well, you know I like them speaking to me. And then that, well, what if they don't ever speak to me again? Or what if I don't have the courage to speak to them? And kind of goes into that inwardness where we take it inside. And uh, are you still hurting other people? Possibly, especially if they care for you. Well, yeah, yeah. I know Richard Rohr, I can't, can't say it exactly, but he's talking about that there are two emotions that really define us. And one is love. Oh, I'm giving it, I, okay, I can't give it to you, but I don't even remember what the other one is, but the other one is trying to correct things and they're not being able to, to be corrected. And it takes us back to that sadness simply because I want to do something, but I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get out from where I am. I don't right. know. So what helped you to get out whenever you found those situations? Well, the, the, I think just making that connection that uh, I was sad because I was uh, angry, that, that there was anger building up. But I, I didn't really feel anger towards myself. It was anger towards other people. But, but instead of... I mean, I may have been a little snippy or a little rude. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I can do that. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I've, I've crushed my image for all of you. Oh. But, um, but once I realized that I could deal with the anger instead of, because I think when you're, when you're dealing with the depression, you're, you're going after the wrong thing. And, and you're, you're trying to figure out why am I feeling so sad, but you don't really get at the root cause where it's, it's the anger. You know, this person 
is saying no to me. <laughs> that was a, 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 I mean, I, I can remember this one boss that I had, he and I just did not get along. And I, I had all these great ideas I thought were great ideas and he kept telling me, no, 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 we can't do this. And I'm like, well, why not? I think this is good. All these other people think this is good. I think sometimes just because I said it, it was not a good idea. And, and I, I would just get more and more and more, more angry um, about that. But once, once I was able to, to, to accept that there was, you know, that it's the anger I needed to, to deal with or the issue that, you know, what was the real issue that was resulting in the anger and dealing with that, that I was able to, to get through it. Okay. I kind of wonder if there's a difference between cultural anger and personal anger. What do you mean? I can give you an example. If, my cultural anger, I'm th talking about now, these days there's a lot of racial anger. Okay. Cultural anger, but it's not, it's not so much personal, it's more something that cultures taught us as kids or whatever is different than my being angry at my brother or my friend or my wife or my sister or whatever. Because it's something that they did towards you, whereas the cultural anger was something that you were taught and nobody yes. actually did anything to yes. you. It's just yes. a belief that you were. Yes. And you. the cultural anger is, is with a wide range of people that don't necessarily have any kind of cause. It's just, we were taught. Until we get back and take a wider view. But and that wider view applies to every one of us. I mean, when you take a word and put it on the thesaurus to see what that word means with, from other directions, you can put in the word system and it comes up, there's about 10, 12, 15, 20 things that what a system involves. But then when you put the word sy systemic, it has like three, and that's universal. It's those individual things that have been used until it becomes a system that is applied universally and we begin to apply it and adapt to it and believe it and don't even know it. Yeah. Because it's so ordinary until it's finally gotten to the point that universally enough people are speaking out that says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. A minute. <laughs> <laughs> There's been too many disregards and something's got to be done. Yeah. And of course that comes up, you know, it was in the sixties and it, it is now, and hopefully it can be settled. But it will never be settled until we, the people, we individually begin to look at ourselves. How do I contribute to the problem? And how can I be a part of the solution? Or to even question, why is this anger coming up? You know, what, what, where is it coming from? You know, why do I feel this anger when nobody of this race or this this type of person ever did anything to me personally. It's just something right. that I learned and I was brought up thinking. Well, I think, I think our, our parents' generation, some of our parents' generation, <clears throat> were taught things and they assumed it was correct. And, well, all and, kids do. <laughs> you know, we, yeah, we adore, our, yeah, idolize but, our parents. Anything that they tell us, we believe. Sure. But Up when, to a when point. You, when you use the word hate, I, I see it in some people here in the United States in, in a racial context. And probably most of those people never had any much, much experience with the other race that, that would justify hate. I mean, it's just that something we were taught and we assume, yeah, that's right. Up is up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And nobody ever questioned it. And some of these cultural assumptions that are now being challenged um, need to be reconsidered, I believe. And it entails getting honest with ourselves. Yeah. We have to get 100% honest with ourselves. Quit lying to us. Yeah. 
you know, that old ego is always there. It's always wanting to edge sanity out, edge God out, as Wayne Dyer defines ego as edging God out. And we don't want to hear all that because I'm right. When I'm right, I'm right. But when we're not, we're not. We've got to get yeah. well, it's in hard. the 12-step program. We've got to get brutally honest with ourselves. It's hard to accept something when somebody challenges what we've always believed was right. I mean, because that is so ingrained inside of us. It's, I mean, that's our first reaction is, no, nope. <laughs> you're challenging me. No, nope. not going there. And so when you're aware of that challenge, begin, begin to let the, let the bar down so that you can actually see and hear what the other person is saying, not to agreement necessarily, but at least to having heard. Yeah, but that's so hard to do. I mean, how, how do you get somebody to start to let that bar down? I mean, you can't come up to them with angry thoughts. It has to be from, from compassion, from understanding, from I want to I, I wanna know what, what you're thinking. I, you know, I, I care about your thoughts, but, I, but they're, they're different. Let's, let's discuss it. Instead well, of saying you're wrong, you're bad. Yeah, it's always in looking at the, you know, wanting the A, B, C, one, two, three. Yeah. That just doesn't work. It and so you have to go with your innateness in the moment. And that if, you're, if you know what your desire is, to always be open and honest and, and frank and, and real, if that's, that's, that's the genuine desire, there will, be a, there will be a softening there that it's to help someone, not, not to fix them. Because change is an inside job. Yeah. And so we try to change people all the time. <laughs> and sometimes it's just having heard what they said and, I mean, and acknowledging it with interesting viewpoint. Yeah. Even if it's right. blatantly again, you know, it's an interesting viewpoint. Yeah. And I have a viewpoint and, you know, sense that you don't want to hear it, so we're not going to share it. But the thing of it is, I have found that if you listen to someone, their voice is hitting the wall, echoing back to them, and they've heard what they've said. And so we really don't have to repeat what they've said. Or we don't have to argue against it. If they spoke it out, it was there. It was it was vibrating. It's just like our spittle. You know, it's why we're wearing our mask now, so that spittle won't go out. Well, those echoes are going back, but they're coming back to us too. We're hearing it. So if we can just trust the things we can't see, <laughs> so if we can That's hard to do trust that. that the one that is spewing out is actually having it having their creative mind hear it and consider it and think about it. What's the best way to deal with personal anger? Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself? Forgive yourself. Hmm. Forgive yourself. And maybe even make a list of the things you're forgiving yourself for. For always being right. <laughs> <laughs> for always wanting to be right. <laughs> for wanting to be perfect. But with the prisoners, you know, I constantly was getting feedback. But we definitely get feedback that, you know, you were hurt, that your ego was bruised, and that then it went into frustration and so forth. And so, well, if we don't know, if we don't know what that hurt came from, uh, I have some suggestions. Maybe it was an unmet need. Have you ever went to the kitchen to look for something because you wanted something that you didn't know what you wanted and you wound up with cookies or ice cream or <laughs> because there was something that was not met, but we can't hand we're too frustrated when it's not met. We're not placated, we're not soothed. 
So we're going to begin to look for something, look for something. And it may be a temporary thing, which it may lead to an addiction too. <laughs> but there's a need that's unmet. And sometimes that anger, that frustration, that, you know, that down into getting that anger is the fact that your worth has been questioned. By Some somebody saying no that. to you. Um, yeah, yeah, or not agreeing with you. They've questioned yeah. your knowledge. They've questioned your worth. They've questioned, you know, and that, that left a sting. Maybe you have a conviction deep down inside that you fail to live up to. You know, you speak of God, mom, and apple pie, and yet you eat peach cobbler instead. <laughs> or you believe in faithfulness, and yet, you know, you're just as unfaithful as can be. We are self-destructing ourselves because we are not living a conviction that is deep down in our wisdom heart but we're not abiding by it to the degree that we have the knowledge to abide by. And once we start abiding by the knowledge that we have the degree to, that degree deepens and oh no, <laughs> oh no, you mean righteousness is a little bit more righteous than that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we become angry with ourselves, but we don't want to admit it. Or maybe it's that unforgiveness. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's definitely something going on when people are angry all the time. Because it just seems like some people, they're, they're just angry at, at life. I, I mean, you get, you see notes from people every once in a while, and you're going, where, you know, what, what is going on in this person's life? It's, I, I feel bad for them, because <laughs> it just seems like they're never happy. And, and it just it spews out into, into every aspect of their life. And, um, and you just have to shake your head as to you know, what's, what's, what's going on with this person. I mean, their scales are definitely out of balance for them to be so angry all, all the time. And um, I mean, and, and I think, you know, with those people just not fighting back with them. I mean, because a lot of times if you ask them what they're so angry about, they probably don't even know. But, um, but if you can just treat them with kindness and understanding, not, not even really have to know why they're doing that way, but just treating them respectfully, because I, I bet they don't get treated very respectfully <laughs> if they're angry every, everywhere they go. And, um, and uh, you know, how, it's just difficult to deal with them because they, I mean, because they don't know to do anything different. That's the, their way of life. That's just the way it's become for them. And they don't know how, how to, to make any kind of changes. And, so I think if you can show those people kindness and understanding that can help to soothe it, <laughs> soothe their anger and calm it down. Uh, I mean, I've, I've read quite a few times, you know, people think that when you're angry, you need to let it out, and that they've got groups that are very angry and they just go back and forth at each other. And then what happens there is that the anger just gets worse and worse and worse. And so that, that's not the way to, that, that's not the way to, to deal with it. And so um, to, to be around angry people is to not get caught up in their anger and try to just be kind. Yeah. And sometimes can I say something? Hi. Can I say something? Hi, Alice. Hi, how you doing? Um, so my ex-husband was a very angry person. And... Um, it didn't matter what I did, if I was kind, if I was whatever, it just didn't matter. So I, I, I went, walked away from the marriage. Um, and he was, he was angry at me for, I don't know what, quitting a job that, you know, bringing in a lot of money and, you know, that was the source of his anger. Um, so, but, you know, you, you've, you've said several times, you know, to treat an angry person with kindness and it just, I mean, I guess from my personal experience, it, it, it was not the way to deal with it. <laughs> the, way, the way for me to deal with it was to 
go to a different country, which means, you know, just get out of the marriage. Well, um, sometimes, and, and, that, mm -hmm. sometimes that is the choice. I mean, you, you, I mean, not everything works for everybody. I, I mean, I would think that, uh, I mean, I, I, my first marriage was kind of stormy <laughs> as well. And, um, yeah, I, I can, I can understand how you try to be kind and you're not going to manipulate me that like that. It's pro probably something <laughs> that, that you heard and, um, you get to the point where it's not, it's not going to work, but, but I would think that's, what, but the being angry at the person doesn't help it either. I, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I'd like to hear of an instance of someone who was angry and was treated with kindness and made the situation better. I, I don't know. <laughs> you well, know? I did that a lot in the workplace. Not, I mean, with my, with my first husband, you know, I try to be kind and after a while it would get to the point where I'd be angry too. <laughs> and so you, you, cause, cause it didn't, cause, cause it, I, I just didn't have the, the patience to do it on a long-term basis. But with people in the workforce, I did it a lot. Uh -huh. and, it, uh, and it worked very well for me in, you know, with somebody that I, who I wasn't living with, but, um, that gives you an education as well. Um, yeah. About trauma informed and all of that, that you're talking about kids who've had these adverse childhood experiences who grew up to be adults with unresolved adverse childhood experiences. And if you do treat them with kindness, now I'm not saying in a marriage, I'm not saying you get to be abused and all of that, but, but it is effective to treat them because they're in that fight, flight, or freeze mode, and a lot of them are in the fight. That's, that's, that's what they've learned to do. That's how they've learned to cope. It's not an effective coping skill, but it is, as, as we say in reality therapy, the best they know is the time to do mm -hmm. it as they can. So we, we have to have patience to teach them something else. You usually can't do that in a marriage situation. You can't do that with your husband. I mean, that would be rare, but it is what we do in education. And like you say, it works in the workforce. So. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> it can work in difficult marriages, but it's definitely not an easy out. And it takes a lot, a lot, a lot. Need, because you would probably need some intervention with someone else, just the two of you. Can, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes being kind to someone just increases their anger. Well, right, right. Because they, right. Because they want to get you in that fight. They want to draw you in, into the, into to be ang angry where, where they are. And, um, yeah. So I was going to say something else and I forgot. So, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, um, but anyway, going back to, you know, so is it the anger that comes first and then the sadness comes after that, or is it the sadness that comes first, um, is, or is it either, either or? Well, it's, if you want to equate hurt and sadness together. Okay. That hurt, you know, whether it's a slap in the face or whether it's something that and i mean you know, if you were slapped in the face maybe you'd be sad that the person disregarded you so much as to slap in the face but it's that initial wounding it's that initial wounding that then kind of leads to the frustration mm -hmm. and it then kind of seeps on down into the um anger whether it's taking it inwardly or outwardly or both are, and are some are some people kind of they have a penchant for being hurt even when there's not a real cause they will interpret something in such a way that they get hurt and then they get angry <clears throat> they, they it almost seems like they formed a habit of finding a way to get hurt. I run into this sometimes and I'm just amazed. I, I, I'm astonished. Yeah. yeah. You do have to be more careful these days about what you say <laughs> because people, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think people are very sensitive 
to, to things. And, and I mean, to you, to, to me, to other people, it's like, what's, what's the big deal? But, but to them, it is a big deal. They, they, they definitely have some beliefs about it that, um, that is offensive. And, um, but you, not going to go around counseling everybody and saying, well, what, <laughs> what's causing this? Um, so I'm going to throw out an example that I'm probably risking a lot because. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh, all these uh, women in here, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> about, about 40 years ago, I had a girlfriend, and I really liked her a lot. She was great. And the relationship lasted about uh, maybe six months. And at one point, as a total compliment, I called her cute. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I'm not cute. Kittens are cute. I'm a woman. I'm not cute. She got really angry. And I meant it as a compliment. She interpreted it as an insult. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's so did you? So th about. did you try to tell her that you meant it as a as a compliment? Yeah. 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 It didn't work. Mm -hmm. For her, at least, it was a big insult. Don't call me cute. Well, mm -hmm. you know, she was cute, actually. You yeah. know, in my mind. But oh no, no, I'm a woman. I'm not cute. Puppies are cute. Kittens are cute. I'm a woman. I'm not cute. And okay. I'll that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I see that. My God, I didn't intend to insult you. I I time. And you turned it around and got angry. Well, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, I can't do it. Talking about uh, uh, all these Texans here. There was three initially when Jerry first came on. He said he was kind of scared to be around these Texans. I uh, want to close this out today with a, with a little poem. And it's called The Showdown. And it's a western town. Picture it so that you can so that you can see it completely. The showdown. Rigorous honesty. Dressed in white. Sun at his back. Rode into town. My gang took cover in the wasted crannies of my mind. False pride strutted on the rooftop. Fear hid under a wagon. Procrastination lingered over by the saloon. Deception looked unarmed, but he wasn't. Suddenly, guns erupted, sparks ignited, smoke prevailed, and then there was calm, and the air smelled clean, and rigorous honesty stood alone. Go in peace. <laughs>